Corn School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by Distinct Herbicide and Pride Seeds. Werner Tobin here for the Corn School. Hey, today I'm joined by Dr. David Hooker from the University of Guelph, Ridgetown Campus. Dave, how's it going? I am doing just great. I'm surviving these times. Hey, uh, I know it's a difficult challenge, obviously, for farmers, but also for lecturers. And uh, you've been doing, you know, when you're teaching, you've been walking fields and recording lectures for your students and obviously sharing those with your students. And um, today... We want to bring viewers into your classroom, and I want to talk about uh, something that you've been obviously lecturing on, and that is hybrid selection and uh, some great management advice. I want to kick this off with a slide that you've uh, you, you've shared with obviously with all your students, and that is you know showing the financial impact of hybrid selection. And you know here's a here's a look at some 2019 Ontario trials, and what does it tell us? I mean, this is a big financial decision. Yeah. It- Absolutely, it is. And it just amazes me how many people do not spend very much time on selecting the hybrid. The potential for loss, for yield losses or a lower yielding than what could have been with a proper hybrid selection is just huge. And so I demonstrated this with this, um, I guess, a comparison. So I used the 2019 Ontario Corn Performance Trials. And I took the lowest hybrid and the highest hybrid at each one of those locations. And then I estimated, like, if we chose, let's say, the lowest yielding hybrid, what kind of yield losses um, would we have expected by choosing that one hybrid or or a bad hybrid or some or a, a bad choice, I guess, of hybrid? What kind of losses would we expect? And when we found out and doing this pro doing this process. And if we look at all of our 18 sites, Ontario Corn Performance Trials, we have the yield range varies from the lowest to the highest yielding hybrid from 43 to 69 bushel per acre. It's, it's just incredible. Like just the power of selecting the right hybrid or the wrong hybrid, how that can influence the bottom line. Yeah, and Dave, you did some numbers here. I mean, like if you look at Dundalk, you know, you know, selecting the highest and lowest on a 100-acre field, you can save $23,000. Um, and, you know, if uh, some of these are twenty five to 30000 Now, obviously, you're not, you're not going to end up choosing a, at the right or the bad end of the scale all the time. But let's talk about how you can make some of those decisions and, you know, make a good hybrid selection. And you say the first thing to think about is timing. You know, go early if you can, but don't push it. Yeah, that's right. So there's lots of criteria that one can make on selecting the right hybrid. Like there's many, many hybrids to choose from. But the question is, like, I can't plant all of these hybrids on my farm. I have to narrow down the selection. Obviously, there's some good choices and some bad choices. And so how do we narrow down the selection um, of hybrids to plant? And there's, I guess, Instead of maybe a scientific approach or a mathematical approach, there's some creativity involved as well. And that kind of makes the process fun. Like if we if we want to, let's say, buy a new truck or a new tractor, we want to look at like dive into the data, look at the reviews on these items, get as much data as possible in order to to make the best decision, because the best decision like this. What this process does not cost us anything. It's not like we're buying more fertilizer or applying a fungicide that's going to cost us money. It's just simply a decision whether to go with one hybrid or another one. Like, of course, seed costs are factored, like just ignoring seed costs and things like that. But just the decision to buy a hybrid um, or to purchase or go to go with a hybrid uh, can be very important. And so to narrow down these choices, uh, one can look at like what hybrids are adapted for your particular area. And one, I guess one process that one can think about when looking at these hybrids is, is looking for hybrids that are adapted for the growing area and picking hybrids that would reflect the growing season or your ability or your, the amount of risk that you'd want to take. Risk management, like farming is all about risk management. 
And so if I plant my corn, if Mother Nature gives me the end of April to start planting my corn, maybe I'd want to put that time, um, plant the hybrids with maybe a little bit later maturity than full season. And so there's various, I guess, different approaches. And one approach is to use uh, maybe 25% of your hybrids, maybe a little bit longer than full season. And 50% of your hybrids, full season, and then maybe 25% of your hybrids um, a little bit earlier than full season, just depending on the level of risk management. Mm. Another thing you talk about, um, Dave, is, you know, consistent yielding hybrids. And talk a little bit about, you know, finding that you talk about it as well, low genetics times environmental interaction. Obviously, consistent without variability. Yes. So... I think in, I think all growers have heard of give or talk about like plant breeders and and um, and agronomists talk about this G by E interaction, genetic by environment interaction. So our goal is like yield trumps just about every characteristic that we are looking at in terms of a hybrid. But other hybrids, other traits are obviously um, important too. But yield is usually at the top of the list. So we want a hybrid that is high yield. And those yields should be consistent across locations. So when I talk about an interaction, I always talk about, you know, this if something that's interacting, that means that a factor is depending on another factor. And that's what the definition of an interaction is. But I don't want my yields. I don't want that high yield to depend on anything. And so I want a high yielding hybrid and one that has a very low uh, G by E interaction. And in order to do that, to detect those hybrids, I need as much data as possible across a wide, diverse number of environments. And as soon as I recognize a hybrid that is high yielding across a number of environments, that's kind of the hybrid that I'm looking for. Hmm. Now, Dave, let's, as I said, we're drilling down through the, uh, uh, shall we say, the selection process. And you mentioned, hey, you, you may end up with 100 hybrids to start. Then you've drilled down through all the data and all the things you've talked about. You're down to 10. Then the selection process really sort of reverts to what works best on your farm and understanding what traits or, you know, what, what factors you need to, to sort of pencil in in that final decision. Yeah, absolutely. So high-yielding hybrid and... And the hybrid that is high yielding across a number of locations and the right maturities and, and so on and so forth. But there are other factors that one needs to consider as well. Like seed costs could be one factor as well. And how many traits or what traits should these hybrids be uh, be or have integrated into their system? Like biotech traits are like the be all and end all. Like they're nice to have if you need them. But if you don't need the biotech traits, so if you have a, a good crop rotation, you probably don't need the, the rootworm, corn rootworm biotech trait, right? And so some of those hybrids, some of those traded hybrids, um, you know, if the yield is high on some of these traded hybrids, maybe you should still consider it. But at least you don't, that's not tops on your priority list in terms of traits. Yeah. So we're looking at standability. We're looking at biotech traits. We're looking at harvest moisture levels, um, test weight, um, maybe a, a, a racehorse hybrid versus a workhorse hybrid. Like if you're if you seed at, at variable rate populations, like though all of those trader traits or characteristics um, are important and should be on the list of of hybrid selection. And I guess the final decision um, you would always suggest that hey, plant multiple hybrids. Do not whittle it down to one, right? Yes, plant multiple hybrids. So we run into this situation just about every year. We say, well, I shouldn't have planted, like myself as a grower, you know, I shouldn't have planted so many acres to this one hybrid because this year it had an issue. Where just if we're investing our money, like we don't want to invest all of our money into one into one investment. We try to diversify our portfolio and we should be thinking the same thing with our corn hybrids as well. So diversifying our hybrid lineup, the genetics, in order to diverse or spread our risk out. And so we can do that by selecting maybe hybrids across varied maturities. And then we would know, if we do that, then we would know that we would be probably getting a diverse genetic um, range of hybrids as well, especially if we spread our hybrids out across um, um, 
like a number of different maturities. Awesome. Hey, Dave, this has been a, a great conversation. Hey, on behalf of all the Corn School viewers, I want to say thanks for letting us, uh, as I say, join the class, and uh, hopefully we can we can come back a couple of times during the winter. Awesome. That'd be great. I just loved us. <laughs> Good stuff. Thanks, Dave. All right. Thanks, Bernard. Take care.